Hey you guys, welcome back to Try Tested and True Instant Pot Cooking, where I share with you Instant Pot inspirations and ways to feel confident using your Instant Pot. I'm Lisa Childs, and today I am going to do the most highly requested video, which is my honest thoughts on the air fryer lid versus an air fryer. Literally every single day in my DMs, on Instagram, in the comments, on any of my, my videos or my posts, they're constantly asking me my thoughts on a pressure cooker air fryer lid combo versus just a standalone air fryer. So I wanted to just tell you what I think side by side. I have a pretty clear winner, but I wanna tell you why. And I also think one is better for certain people, for certain situations. So I'll tell you everything that you need to know. Okay, let's get started. First, I have this Instant Pot brand six quart instant pot vortex plus air fryer. This is so nice, it's pretty big. I'm going to unbox this and then I'll show you side by side what I think. The instant pot company actually sent this to me as a Christmas gift so thank you so much to my friends over at instant pot. But just as a reminder, always these opinions are always my own and I was not compensated for this video in any way. All right, so this is an air fryer lid that goes on any pressure cooker. This one is the Milthy pressure cooker lid. It's a different brand than Instant Pot, but Instant Pot sells pretty much the same thing. I'll give you some pros and cons of this one versus the Instant Pot brand one, but it's just the general concept of an air fryer pressure cooker lid that I'll be talking about today. I'm just gonna unbox this and we'll tell you everything that's inside. First, I need to say thank you so much, so, so much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you to my friends, Paula, Jackie and Miranda for donating to my secret Santa. You guys watched my last video and then you came and donated to our fundraiser and it was absolutely life-changing and incredible. So thank you so much. So this is the Instant Pot brand. It's not a pressure cooker. This is a standalone air fryer. This is the Vortex. So, oops, I wanna show you what it looks like. So we have first, it's very um, square in shape. It's a about a foot, maybe a little over a foot tall. Oh boy. And it has a touch little display here, which is really nice and a dial to change the temperature and the cook time. And then you just kind of use your thumb like this and kind of pop, oh, it's taped. That's why it wasn't coming out. I was like, what am I doing? Okay, so there's tape here, I'll take that off. So I just like to use kind of like my thumb right here and just press it open. And it comes with some packaging here. Okay. Oh. This is the basket for the air fryer. So it comes with this little rack here. And this is what keeps the food off of the bottom. And you need to always have this. It's kind of like the trivet in your Instant Pot, but actually it's more like the glass plate in your microwave because it keeps everything off and you need you need that off. So it comes with like a little handle so then you can pop it right out. It also has these little rubber gaskets. <sighs> gaskets, I don't know if that's the right word, but it has these little rubber things. So then you can just easily place it in here and it fits nicely like that. It doesn't come with anything else, it just comes with those. And then once you're ready, you just put it in there and then there's an air fry, roast, broil, let's see, bake, reheat, dehydrate, and temp buttons on here. If I wanna air fry something, I'll just press air fry. Okay, and then I guess I need to press time, move it, it's very loud. <laughs> okay, so change the time. Change the temperature. Okay, so I guess 400 is the max temperature and 180 is the lower end of the temperature. So 180 to 400 is the range. Oh, start, there's a start button. On here, I liked what this says. You can hear it's just kind of warming up right now. This says preheat 
on here so you can tell that the food is not going to be cooking right away. The air fryer is just preheating on its own. So that's kind of an interesting feature. It says on, just kind of like on the Instant Pot. After you add the number of minutes that you want, it says on. Maybe they like want the same wording like throughout their products. So it's getting warm and it's actually pretty quiet compared to my other air fryer. But I really like that dial that you can change the temperature and the minutes and it's very obvious to have both on there at the same time. You don't have to kind of go between the different temperature and the minute settings. So after the vortex preheats, it kind of bumps up the air frying. I can hear it getting a little bit louder and it beeped at me a couple times to say add food. And that means that the air fryer is done preheating, which is actually a really smart feature. I really like that. So we'll take this out like this and this is hot on the bottom. So make sure like you're not setting it on something that could break or burn um, if it's too hot. I usually like to just pull it out and kind of prop it like that. And usually I would wash this. I'm not gonna eat what I'm gonna air fry. So usually you like wash the basket and you wash the rack, but you don't have to wash this actual unit. So that's really nice. So I have just some frozen pork egg rolls. I'm just gonna stick one right in there. Now it's all in there, but <laughs> there it is. I like to just put it right in there. An air fryer is absolutely incredible for making anything crispy crispier. So if you were to put an egg roll in the oven, it would just kind of get like hard, right? It would get baked and kind of dried out a little bit. But an air fryer, it recirculates that air really well. So then things that are normally fried and crispy in like a deep fryer, they come out almost identical in the air fryer, but we are not using any oil, which is so cool. And honestly, we use our air fryer more than probably any other appliance. And that's saying something because I have like eight instant pots. So I do use those all the time, but our air fryer just gets so much more everyday practical use because everyone in my family uses it. My husband even uses it. He likes to put, you know, leftovers, leftover pizza, mozzarella sticks, stuff like that. Anything that you buy in the freezer section is incredible in the air fryer. Oh, the best thing in the air fryer is french fries. In the rare instance that we do have leftover fries and we bring them home, they're just not quite as good the next day because if you microwave them, they just kind of get soggy. And if you put them in your oven or a toaster oven, they just get kind of stale and hard. We'll just throw those fries in there for a couple minutes and they taste like new. Not even kidding. So it's pretty amazing. Okay, now that's been sitting forever, sorry. We'll just stick this right back in. Okay, and it remembers, and it's just a little bit louder than when it was preheating. I think you can kind of hear that a little bit. So we'll just put this in. I wonder if we can change the time while it's cooking. So the temperature, oh, you can. Okay, I'm gonna put this on 400, and the time will do like 12 minutes. I think that's about what the egg rolls call for. So we'll just keep those right there. Okay, we're back and the air fryer has been going. It's counting down now, which I really like that it counts down the seconds that takes a lot of the guesswork out. And <laughs> okay, so it will kind of keep going. I think it's like kind of cooling down until you take it out. So when you open it, it eventually does stop. Whew, it looks so good. Okay, put it right here because that's really hot. All right, so we're gonna take this out and we are a Japanese household, of course. <laughs> Chopsticks are the best cooking utensil. So this is what it looks like. Oh, can you hear it? Woo! Oh, it's so hot. <gasps> Super crunchy, like looks like it was deep fried. And I love that. <laughs> I'm not gonna eat it but wow, messy. Um, that is what it looks like. And you could fit like a whole bunch of egg rolls in this air fryer, which is why I always recommend that if you are shopping for an air fryer, don't get anything that's less than about five 
quarts. Um, they come in all these different sizes. You'll see some for like 30 bucks that are only like two to three quarts, but that is literally half the size. You could put like two egg rolls in there. So it's not worth it. You're gonna end up getting rid of the $30 one and just buying the bigger one again. So I'm a big believer in buying the correct thing the first time. That is actually highly impressive. It's very sleek. I really like the look of it. Um, if you've never used an air fryer before, they don't, they do heat up a little bit. Like in the back, there's a vent. So it kind of heats up a little bit. The sides get a little warm. The, the front, any of the metal pieces do get a little bit warm. The top actually doesn't get too hot. The sides and the back are definitely the hottest. So just be careful with that. But this is actually so much more convenient than like turning on your full oven. If you need to warm something up, crisp something up, just make like a quick side dish. The air fryer is the way to go. So that's one of the reasons why I love the standalone air fryer basket. It's just so much more convenient to put large batches of food in there and it's also really easy to clean up. So to clean the air fryer, I, I honestly don't clean it every single time I use it unless it's like really messy. I'll just clean it like every couple uses. If you know the rat gets really dirty, I'll just take that out and wash it in like by hand or in the dishwasher. And then the basket inside of here, after I take the rack out, you just like scrub it with a scrubby and some hot soapy water and it's amazing. <laughs> some of my favorite dishes to do in the air fryer are like, I'll just do a bunch of broccoli with some olive oil, salt and pepper, some lemon zest, some like garlic salt, and then I'll just put in the air fryer for about, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. And you just wanna shake it about halfway in between cooking so then it gets more evenly distributed and that is why I love the basket. You can just take that straight out and just kind of shake any of the food that you put in there because it does crisp a little bit better on the top than it does on the bottom even though a lot of times I just forget and I just like let it be and it's totally fine. Some of my other favorite things to do in an air fryer are my air fryer cream cheese wontons. Those are so easy and addicting to eat. Reheating pizza in the air fryer is a game changer. Sometimes if I'm doing like little mini baked desserts or like just like a small portion of something, I'll use the air fryer instead of the oven and that saves me time. It saves a lot of just hassle turning on the whole oven versus this, which is really nice. Another thing I love to use the air fryer for is to broil anything that like isn't a little dish. So if I make like a small casserole or a small plate, some maybe some nachos in a cake pan, I'll just put some nacho chips in there. What are they called? Tortilla chips in there. Sprinkle them with cheese and then I'll stick them in the air fryer and then they get nice and toasty and crisp and the cheese melts. So good. I think it's also a really good tool to use in conjunction with an Instant Pot because an Instant Pot uses water or steam <laughs> to cook and an air fryer will get things crispy if you need to transfer from cooking in the in the Instant Pot to the air fryer, such as like my Instant Pot chicken drumsticks. If you wanna baste them with sauce, get them a little bit caramelized and toasty, you can do that. Or like country style ribs are really good in the Instant Pot, but I really like to just caramelize that barbecue sauce after they come out, so then they're just like extra good. So I like using the air fryer for that. All right, next we are going to talk about the pressure cooker air fryer lid. So this is a product that you can purchase separately or if you buy the Instant Pot Duo Crisp, it comes with it. So it comes with like the pressure, the Instant Pot pressure cooker and it comes with the pressure cooker lid. And then it also comes with this like kind of, it looks like a Chinese dumpling almost. Like I feel like it looks like a dumpling. It comes with the air fryer lid as well. Like I said, this is not the Instant Pot brand, but the air fryer pressure cooker lids that are sold by many different manufacturers are, they're, they're the same concept. So I'm gonna share about what I think about the concept of the lid versus a standalone air fryer. So this is how it works. You're gonna have this lid that under here, whoop, this is like the heating unit. This is usually, I guess this is like the device that's inside of this top part here. And then you use this on top of your Instant Pot and you turn it on and it just air fries from the top 
down. So you have to have an instant pot to do this. It gets really hot, but the instant pot itself is not on. Your pressure cooker is not on. I do not advise it to be on. That would make like heat from the top and heat from the bottom. You don't need that. This is standalone. So for this particular model, this is what they want you to do. So you have your instant pot liner or your pressure cooker liner and you put it in the pressure cooker base because I mean technically I guess you could have it just stand alone but then this part would get super hot so that's why you have to have it in the base. So you put that in the base and then it came with this extra tall trivet. The instant pot trivet the legs are probably like not even half an inch. They're, they're just little things to, to keep stuff off the bottom of the pot. But this one is significantly larger. It's about, it's a couple inches, probably at least two or three. So it comes with this trivet. So you're supposed to put the trivet inside of your pressure cooker liner. And then it came with this kind of little basket. And you're supposed to put the basket on top of the trivet. From what I understand about the Instant Pot brand one, it has kind of like a can. It's kind of like two canisters that you set inside of your Instant Pot and that's where the food goes in. So this particular model is a little basket. The Instant Pot brand one is um, kind of a similar little contraption that you set inside of the Instant Pot and then you put the lid on top. So you put the lid on top and for this particular model, the little handle has to be down and then you press the temperature button and this one actually goes up to 500 degrees, which I do really like because then you can broil really quickly and really fast at, at a high temperature. Um, and then you do the time and then you adjust with the buttons and then there's a stop button and a start button. So you press start and I like this one because it actually lights up. So then you can see inside the glass. This is really a nice feature. I do really like that part about it. The Instant Pot brand one does not have the glass so you can't look in and check on your food. So that's one thing that I like about the standalone air fryers that you can easily just take out your basket, shake it up and take a look at it and see what everything looks like without disturbing anything too much. This one, you can look directly in and it has this light which kind of lights up the food, which is really nice so you can see. Okay, so I guess we should probably put some food in there. So I'm gonna do one of these um, egg rolls. So I just put this up. Um, I'm putting the egg roll right, oh, <laughs> right in the basket, sorry. And the heat is very direct, because I mean, it goes here to here. It's probably only a couple inches away, which is nice, I guess, for some um, Instant Pot dishes where maybe you just want like cheese melted on the top of a dish, uh, without like the rack in it. Like if you have the full thing, if you have like a big pot of mac and cheese and then you just sprinkle some cheese on top and then you want to air fry it and then like melt the cheese and kind of brown it a little bit. I see like, I, I think that's a really good application of this product. So we're gonna turn this on. Uh, we're gonna go 400 to make it fair. <laughs> Okay, so we can see that it's cooking, which is nice. I really like that. It's a lot quieter than this one, obviously, because they're just powering this little thing versus like this huge thing. And so I want to tell you kind of some of my initial like pros and cons while this is cooking. So the very first thing that I prefer about the standalone air fryer versus the lid is that I just have one thing to clean, which is the basket. And I don't even have to clean it that often. I actually have our air fryer plugged in in the pantry because that's how often we use it. And we just go in, throw something in, take it out. And then I clean it like every couple uses because it just doesn't need to be cleaned all the time. With this one, you actually have to have the Instant Pot available. So that's one thing. You have to take the whole Instant Pot or your pressure cooker out from wherever it's in storage, put it on the counter, put a clean liner in there, and most people probably only have the one that it came with. And then you have to put the trivet in, and then you have to put the basket in, and then you have to put the food in. And so anything, all that grease, any of the little crispies, any crumbs are gonna fall to the bottom of the Instant Pot liner. And that is just 
a big hassle for me if I want to air fry something. I don't want to like take out one appliance, make sure that it's clean, make sure that it's not being used, take out another appliance, put it on two additional things that need to be cleaned, and then like wait. That feels just, it's just a little bit cumbersome for me, which is why one of the reasons why I prefer the standalone air fryer over the pressure cooker air fryer lid. So see, we saw the light turn off. It turns on and off just kind of occasionally. So it's kind of an interesting design. I'm not sure why. See, then it kicks back on like that. I do like that this one is quieter than this one, but if I ever want to like take something and turn it, I have to lift this up and then it comes with a little thing to set it on if it's hot, but then I like go in here and flip my food. Ooh, but then like this is so hot. Like the rim of the Instant Pot is super hot. So then I flip it and then I have to like set it back on, put this on, and then I have to press start again. Okay, so then it restarted the time, which I don't like. And it's just, it's just not my favorite. That being said, I do think that this product has some good applications and I do think some people should buy it if you fall into these categories. So if you don't think you're going to use an air fryer very often, this might be good for you because then you can just use it very occasionally. It's obviously a lot smaller. It's a lot more compact than like this giant thing. This is, this is a pretty big investment and if you already have one of these, it's about the same footprint in your kitchen. So this is not that much more. If, you, if you're low on space, this might be a good alternative. If you enjoy doing a lot of dishes and you don't care too much, go for it. If you like things to always stay clean, I think, you know, if you're up for it, that's totally great. And I think it's a good use for that. If you are cooking for one, I do think that this is a good product because if you're cooking for just one or two portions in your Instant Pot and then you want to broil something, if you want to crisp it up, then this is good because everything, mostly everything should fit in this basket. This, you definitely have way more space like because you have this whole surface area to cook and the more spread out things are, the better they cook, right? Just like in the oven. In here, you just have that little circular basket or that little net that the Instant Pot brand one comes with and it's just not very big. So for example, here, I'm just gonna take, take this off. See, so now I have to set this somewhere <laughs> because it's really hot. We'll just put it back there on, on the stove. Now we've got this egg roll and since the heating element is so much closer, to the food, it's definitely browned more. I dare say even a little burned. So that's kind of an interesting observation. And then just you have to be super careful because this is so, so hot. It is ridiculous. So this is this egg roll, we'll put it back in there. Then it does come with tongs, but then you have, see this basket, it's like dripping with grease. And then the bottom of the Instant Pot has a whole bunch of grease in it too. So I'm just, I'm just not a huge fan of that. So like I said, if you only need to ever air fry something that is this size, or if you just like doing things in many batches, like this would work, right? The only thing is that the price difference between this or a similar air fryer and the air fryer lid is very negligible. So we have this and that's kind of like a comparison. You can see like how much more space the basket has versus this little net. The Instant Pot Duo Crisp where you buy the Instant Pot pressure cooker and it comes with the lid. It comes in an eight quart size. And so if you're not normally going to be cooking an eight quart like Instant Pot meals, I do think that the lid just standalone is a little bit better because I think a six quart is what most people will be able to get the most use out of. I have an eight quart and I 
I never use it because I just, it's just a lot. It's really big. It's like bigger than me. <laughs> and so I don't use my Instant Pot 8 quart unless I'm like making a ton of food, which we haven't had any gatherings this year. So I don't really need that. If you do have a larger family, it is practical. But if you have a larger family where you're using that eight quart Instant Pot, having that lid and only having that small surface area is not gonna cut it. Like, I'm just, it's just not, I'm just being honest. This is gonna be a lot better for your needs if you have a larger family. If you do have just one or two people that you're cooking for, it is a good size. Like it's a good size for just maybe a single portion, but at the same time, there are going to be more instances where you would probably prefer a larger air fryer. Why am I holding this? This is like the worst, look at this. It's like totally beat up. I need to get new oven mitts. My friend Krista gave this to me though, so I do love it, but it is hammered. <laughs> okay, so going back, I do think that the air fryer lid is good if you're making small portions, if you like cleaning, and if you have maybe a slightly lower budget. I highly suggest and prefer a standalone air fryer because the features are so much more robust. It's more even. It was created to be an air fryer. <laughs> just like two-in-one shampoo and conditioner, I just, it works, but having shampoo and conditioner, it's just, it just works better, right? Can we agree on that? So I like that it's standalone. It's just, it's larger, it cooks more evenly, and it's just a little bit more reliable. So I love this one that the Instant Pot Company has come out with. It's very sleek in design. Um, I love the interface. I like how it has the, the number of minutes and the temperature on the interface at the same time. It's a really good air fryer, so I'm really happy about that one. The air fryer lid is a good alternative, but it's not what I suggest for people who are looking for an air fryer. I think you will be a little bit frustrated with how clunky it is to use. It's not a dedicated air fryer, so then you have to like get out your pressure cooker, even though you're not using your pressure cooker, then you have to like put your stuff in, wash all this stuff, and it's just, you're not gonna use it. Like, I have this lid and I have not used it. I think I've used it like four times, um, aside from when I was testing it in like the last two years. I just, not even four. It does work, but it's just, I would prefer a standalone air fryer. There are so many people who love, love, love their air fryer lid, and so absolutely no hate to them. This is just my personal opinion. When people ask me, I give them the pros and cons. This is why I prefer one over the other, and so I'm not dissing anyone. I think they're good products. Both of them are really good products. They just have different uses. For me and for most people generally, and from what I've read and from what I've seen, I think you'll be happier with a standalone air fryer versus an instant pot or a pressure cooker lid. So I wanna know what you guys think. In the comments, tell me what you, what your opinion is on an air fryer versus an air fryer lid. And if you want any more information, if you have questions, let me know and I'll answer them next time. See ya.